Manu will now enter the stage and give you a live coding session and will develop an NFT blockchain application. Thank you, Manu. Thank you, Max. Good evening, everyone. My name is Manu. And today, I'm going to demonstrate how you can build an NFT blockchain application using our latest SDK. So before we move on, let us first understand what is fungible and non-fungible asset. A fungible asset is something which is mutually interchangeable, like a dollar bill or a Bitcoin. Whereas a non-fungible asset is something not non-mutually interchangeable, like a painting from like you know, a Mona Lisa, which is unique in nature and it cannot be divided. So following are some of the characteristics of an NFT. So it is a digital token, which is unique in nature, and it is indivisible and non-mutually interchangeable, unlike the fungible tokens. So now that we understood what is a non-fungible token, so I'm going to demonstrate you building the application in three simple steps. So what you need is an NFT module in order to create the transaction, purchase the transaction, and then a plugin to monitor this blockchain application and collect the data and enrich the information and provide the metadata to the user interface. And finally, you integrate the NFT module, the plugin, to run the blockchain application. So let's move in to the code. In the interest of time, I have prepared the blockchain application and the front-end application to demonstrate. So as you can see, we have the create NFT transaction asset. So first, you would import the list SDK library and then extend the base asset to create your asset token. And then you need to specify the unique name and then the ID for the asset. And then provide the schema for the asset for creating the NFT token. So wherein you have the minimum purchase margin, the initiate value, and then the name of the token. So once you have defined this, you have the apply logic. As Shu earlier mentioned, we have application lifecycle events wherein the apply will process the transaction. And as you can see, it verifies if sender has a minimum balance. And then if sender doesn't have the balance, then the token will not be created. So if the sender has a balance, then the NFT token will be created by using the asset name, the owner address, and his nouns, and then the initial value of the token with the minimum purchase margin. And then the sender account will be updated with the NFT token. And finally, his account will be debited with the initial value that is being set. So as you saw, Creating an NFT token was that easy. So now let's move on how you can build a purchase NFT token. In order to build the purchase NFT token, you have to follow the similar steps. You extend the base asset and then define the name and ID. As you can observe here, the ID is different. So for the create, you have ID 0, and then the ID is 1. You need to make sure the IDs for each transaction asset is unique, and then the name is also unique. And then you define the schema for purchasing the NFT. So as you can see, in order to purchase, you need to have the NFT ID defined. And then you need to specify the purchase value that you're specifying, and then the name of the token that you're purchasing. As you can see in the apply step, the NFT token will be verified for its existence. If the NFT token does the purchase you are trying to purchase doesn't exist, then it will throw an error. And then you, uh, you take the NFT token from the owner account and then add it to the collector account. So then finally, debit the tokens from the purchaser and debit to the, uh, the, the, the artist 
who created the NFT. So that is all about the purchasing NFT. Now, let's see how you can integrate these two transaction assets in the NFT module. The NFT module extends the base module. And also, it has the three similar things, which is the name, the ID, and then the asset schema. As you can closely observe, the ID is 1,000. Because up until 1,000, LISC has preserved the modules so that when, in the future, we're going to evolve and then build a few more modules. So the community can start building the modules from ID 1000. All this information is available in our lip. And as you can see, the transaction asset includes the two assets that we created, which is creating the NFT and purchasing the NFT. And you have actions. As Shu earlier mentioned, if an off-chain module wants to know what's, what are the event and actions going on inside the blockchain application, you could expose through the action and events. So here, one action is getting all the NFT tokens that were created. So that's all. So now you understood how you can create an NFT token, purchase the NFT token, and how you integrate these two tokens inside the module. So you could also use many other lifecycle events inside the NFT module. So now that we understood NFT module, let's move on to NFT API plugin. So what is a plugin? As Shu earlier explained, a plugin can be anything. Like you know, it can be a daemon service, a HTTP service, or a WebSocket service. For this demonstration, I have used an HTTP API service. Here, you can see the, uh, the plugin was extending the base plugin. And then the base plugin wants you to implement mainly these events, actions, load, and then unload. I'm going to explain what each step does. In the load step, when the application boots up, it loads the plugin. And then when it loads, it does all of the actions that you define. In this case, an express server will be created. And then it exposes following endpoints, which can be consumed by the UI service. And it also, as you can observe, listens to the channel events. And then it can build the metadata. As you can observe here, for every block that is being created on the blockchain, it saves the transaction and saves the NFT transaction history. And I will show you how this information being used in the UI later. And finally, for all the plugins, you need to ensure that like, you close your, so if it is HTTP server, you close the server and handle all the closing logic in the unload. So building an NFT plugin is that easy. So now that you understand both NFT module and an API plugin, now let's move on to the index file where we integrate both the module and the plugin to run the blockchain application. In order to run the blockchain, create the blockchain application and run it, you need to first import the application from the Lisk SDK. And we also provide the configuration and the Genesis block with the default for DevNet. You could also create your own configurations and then Genesis block using our Lisk Genesis library. So as you can see, I have imported the NFT module and the API plugin that I already showed. And I'm also extending the Genesis block accounts to include the NFT attributes. And I'm modifying the application config to make sure that I have a unique name for the application, in this case, NFT app. And I am also specifying the community identifier to avoid also mitigate the transaction replay. So once you have the Genesis config and an application config ready, then you can initialize the application with the interface default application by specifying the Genesis config and then the application config. And that gives you an application instance. If you want, if you do not want the default modules that we provide, for example, token transfer, keys module, and sequence, and many more, you could directly use the application with something like this. And then 
you know, you can specify Genesis config along with the config, and then you could take the application and then register the specific modules that you want. Let's say you want only a token transfer module and then the sequence. You don't want multi-signature, right? You could also customize like this. And this is how flexible with the, the new SDK. So now moving on. I'm importing the NFT module and then the plugin. And the way to register this module and plugin is using the interface register module and register plugin. So once you have registered the plugins and the modules, then you run the application with the run. And that's it. This is all you had to do to create your own custom blockchain. It could be NFT. It could be any other blockchain use cases that Shu earlier mentioned. So now let's run the application to see in action. So I'm in the root directory, and I'm running the blockchain application. So as you can see, the blockchain application is now forging and then creating the blocks every 10 seconds. Right. And now I'm going to start the front-end application to demonstrate how you could create and then create the NFT token and purchase the NFT token. Uh, I also created some of the accounts. For example, an artist account and two collector accounts to demonstrate how an artist could sell his art and the collector or a fan who's interested in this art can buy this art. So now I'm going to create an NFT token. Imagine this could be a painting from uh, Leonardo da Vinci, right? So he want to sell Mona Lisa painting. I, rather, I know that he, he wouldn't, but yeah, let's say. Uh, then he creates uh, the, uh, the painting, and then he specify the purchase margin. Let's say if it is 100 LISC or 200 LISC. And then he keeps the purchase margin. Here you could see we have the new dynamic fee system. Imagine if you have a lot of traffic in your application. You could increase the fees to 5 cents, and then, or you could also use one or any other fee in order for it to be processed earlier. So I'm going to use the lower fee and then specify the passphrase of the account of the artist. So now I have created the NFT token, Mona Lisa painting. So now let's go and see. So as you can see, the transaction was accepted and included in the block. And this information was tracked by the NFT plugin, and then the UI rendered the information. So here you can see our new LISC address system, and you can see the NFT history. So now I'm going to purchase this painting by specifying the passphrase, and then providing the minimum purchase value. So now the painting ownership from the artist is transferred to the collector, which is me. So as you can see from the NFT history here, so I, the ownership got transferred to mine. So now let's say Shu want to purchase this uh, art painting from me. So then he will specify his account passphrase and then provide the purchase value, and then the fee. And there you go. So the ownership got transferred from me to Shu now. So in the history, you can see earlier the, the artist created the painting and then put on sale. And as a collector, I bought it. And then from me, Shu bought it. So this is how easy and simple to build any blockchain application, not only NFT, using our LISC SDK. I encourage you to try out our new LISC SDK coming in December. And with that, uh, let's see the overview of what we just built. So this is what, in theory, we have built, which is like a you know, transaction, which mutates the account state. And then it is encompassed by the module. And then plugin watches all this transaction happening on the blockchain, and then capture the information provide the metadata to the user interface. 
So following some of the use cases that you could try to build using our Lisca SDK, you could build a virtual asset. You could build another crypto kitty, like an app, collectibles. You could build a real life fantasy sport like Soar, and even tickets or a digital identities. Thank you all. You can follow our documentation, and then I am going to upload this example into the list case case. And then you could also always reach us in the list chat for any questions if you have or any support that you need to build your blockchain application. Thank you. Thank you so much, Manu. I don't know what you think, but in my opinion, for building a blockchain application, which is still essentially like rocket science, this seemed super simple and accessible. After all, accessible is one of our core values here at LISC.